Yeah, all right. Look at that. Already done. Thanks for the applause. Uh, catch you later in the gift shop. Uh, my name Carl, my name is Carl Sigendick. Welcome. If you're not here to hear about cybersecurity careers and, and share, sharing the word and, and telling other people about how great cybersecurity careers can be, uh, then you're in the wrong place. Uh, the bathroom is down the hall. The beer is right out in the hall. <laughs> Uh, but th thanks for coming. So my name is uh, Carl Sikendik. Um I am, uh, let's see, what did I write up there? I, uh, I'm active duty Air Force officer, Lieutenant Colonel uh, in the Air Force. So I've got a call sign, Rosie. Uh, I'm also uh, a dad uh, to two kids who showed up today. Thanks, thanks so much. And, and the husband of that one in the back, thank you. Uh, I'm stationed here at Joint Base San Antonio. I've got a a uh, bachelor's in electrical engineering and a master's in computer science. And I'm the current commander of the 90th Cyber Operations Squadron, the home of the, the, home of the hacker. Um, hack them up! Uh, <laughs> thus the stickers and, and I'm repping our gear here today. But let, let me get this out of the way at the start. This is a, it's a volunteer effort that I'm a part of, totally separate from my job. Uh, it's just a labor of love, and my opinion, this, this is my opinion, it represents my opinion, not the opinion of the DOD or the Air Force or, or anybody like that, just, just me personally. Um, safe to say, I, I'm a huge nerd. Uh, I've been doing programming and, and developing tools and the like for years. Um, and, and I love attending security conferences because I get to talk with, with folks that are kind of like-minded. I, uh, I get to hear from folks, but why, why have you showed up at a security conference today? Anybody willing to share? Man in the back, why have you showed up here today? Uh, some really attractive man invited me. <laughs> I, got, I got 20 bucks for you later. Uh, and what, who else, why, why are you here, why are you here? To learn. And contribute. To learn and contribute. Excellent. Yeah, me too. Anybody else? Yeah, Dan. Volunteer and spread the word. Volunteer and spread the word. Anybody else? Anybody? Yeah. Networking. Networking opportunities. Yep. Yeah. Networking with kind of like-minded folks, folks in, in the same kind of realm domain. Anybody else kind of first-timer at uh, B-Sides or a conference in general? Why'd you show up today? What's that? CPEs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> CPEs for what? Uh, CCSP in the second class. Awesome. Do you find a, a learning benefit on top of the just like, you know, getting some points? Yeah, there's been a, a lot of good talks today. Excellent. Really good. Good. I, I hope you're having fun. Um, so, I, you know, I think, I think folks come to these for, for all those reasons. To learn about the domain that we love and find interesting and, and like to geek out on and and, and a lot, probably a lot of us have uh, cybersecurity uh, hacking as a hobby, as, as much as a, as a job. Uh, but also to meet others who love to learn and uh, to, to teach and mentor, to try and, to try and help grow that community. Well, the, the Cybersecurity Career Ambassador Program uh, that, that we're here to talk about has kind of all of those motivations as part of its mission. Uh, so you're, you're likely motivated by meeting people and discussing cybersecurity. That's, that's why you bothered to show up on a Saturday afternoon. It's hot out. You know, I don't know if you're as sweaty as I am, uh, but it, it's hot out. It takes effort to get here. It's a pretty cheap conference, but it still costs a little bit to get in. And then you got to sit and listen to boring people like me, drone on. Uh, but we're, you're all motivated to do that. For, for these exact reasons. Sharing knowledge with diverse audiences, collaborating on cybersecurity, mentoring and guiding the next generation of, of hacker persons. Hacker man. <laughs> okay, so that's that cybersecurity career ambassador program. This is, this is a, a, a program that was started by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST as part of their, their NICE framework, which used to stand for National Cyber Education, but, but they took away the whole acronym and they just made it a capitalized word as what NICE means. If you're familiar with NICE, it's probably from the, the framework that they put out to consider hiring uh, in the DOD Eastern the Defense Cyber Work Role framework. Uh, but it's, it's, uh, it describes and attempts to describe the knowledge and the skills required for all, all kinds of jobs across the cybersecurity spectrum. But 
this this started up uh, as a as a White House initiative and as a and as an initiative by law to really spread cybersecurity education and increase the amount of uh, capacity and knowledge that we've got here in the U.S. So the stated purpose of this career ambassador community of interest is mentor and guide others to cultivate the next generation of cyber experts who are diverse, inclusive, and dedicated to protecting the cyber world. But in, in plain English, the goal is to tell people about cyber careers. It's just that simple. Tell people about cyber careers, how to get into them, what the benefits are, why they should do it. It kicked off at the beginning of 2024, but it was kind of being organized back in 23. So new program, already got about 150 folks. And when we host our, our monthly meetings, we get about 50 attendees, you know? And, and so to me, that's a pretty live community of interest. Uh, people are showing up, they're active, they're sharing what they're doing along these lines. Uh, so this, this is an expert that I, I, an excerpt that I, I clipped from uh, whitehouse.gov uh, talking about this program and how it's, it's uh, uh, helping accomplish some national level objectives in, in the URL down there. What, what do these ambassadors do? Cyber Security Career Ambassador Program. Post events that bring people together over cybersecurity, uh, speak at events like B-Sides, try and, try and inform others. In general, we try and go for audiences that are not already in this career space, audiences that are, are maybe considering careers. Uh, last year, I got to go to talk at the Texas Cyber Summit. Last speaker mentioned that as well. He said he had a little tearful moment at the Texas Cyber Summit up in Austin. That's happening in May of 25. They're kind of skipping 24. But that was an excellent event, and I suspect this is a little bit too, where you can capture folks that are, are really not in this career field. You know, they're, they're coming to pick their first lock, you know, maybe, maybe learn about some of the tools and techniques that are out there, but, but they're maybe not in this career field already. That's, that's who us ambassadors are trying to go after. We're trying to inform those folks so that they understand the road to a cybersecurity career. Uh, you know, if, if creating and sharing videos or other content on social media is really your jam, that's we need ambassadors to help us with that too, because I am not a social media guy, um, but, uh, but some people are. So that's what we're looking for ambassadors to do. Uh, as an example, uh, at, at my unit, the United Cyber Operations Squadron, we, we, uh, we've been mentoring some cyber patriot teams, right? We've been providing technical mentorship. Um, and so earlier this year, uh, we, we brought in the high schoolers and we kind of showed them around our office. We introduced them to people that are doing uh, our, the type of work that we do, which is cyber capability development. We've got a web page. If you're interested, I handed out those stickers, even though this is, this is not at all affiliated. Always recruiting, always recruiting. Uh, we, we showed them around our office, which we call the shed, and, uh, and told them about what, what, each, each, what each of our folks do. We gave them some demos. And then, and then I got a chance to talk to them directly and, and tell them, for those interested, the path to becoming uh, um, uh, an Air Force contributor, right? So we've got uh, government, uh, civilians, we've got contracted civilians, and we've got military members as well. Um, not everybody in Cyber Patriot is interested in a career in cybersecurity. A lot of those folks who can familiar with the program, they're, they're mostly trying to find something to do. Maybe they're, they want some, a credit, you know, something that they can put on their college application. Maybe that, uh, that member of the opposite sex or the same sex that they're interested in is participating. And so they're participating too. But, you know, as I described, what we do in cybersecurity to defend critical infrastructure, right? To defend national security, people were interested. You know, there were, there were a few people that were on the edge of their seats. You know, I had that one guy in the back who asked all the goofy questions, but he was on the edge of his seat, right? I, I recognize that guy, you know? Silly questions, but, but really genuinely curious. And, and just, just finding and talking to a few of those people, encouraging them to build a home lab instead of trying to hack servers across the internet, uh, encouraging them how to, how to get into a college degree program that'll spit them out into this field, uh, suggesting some potential career paths. Uh, that, I find that really rewarding uh, because they don't give me any time to do programming anymore. So I just have to, you know, live vicariously. So, that, so that's exactly what ambassadors do. 
And, and we're, we're going after folks of all ages, as I mentioned. This, we've got some slide decks that we share amongst the ambassadors so that, so that people have things to build upon. And these next couple of slides are from a K-12 deck that we've got. When, when the fire truck pulls up and the fireman steps out and the kids look up at that fireman, in, in San Antonio, it's amazing. When the fire truck, my daughter is in preschool, and when the fire truck shows up, there's like two women Right? There's like five dudes. There's a lot of diversity on the fire crews in San Antonio. And so those kids in the preschool, they look up and they see someone, they, they more than likely see someone that looks like them. They can envision themselves being a fire person, driving that big old truck. Like who remembers wanting to do that when they were a kid? I do. How do we do that for cybersecurity? That's, that's what we're trying to do when it comes to K-12. It's like help, help people envision what that means Help them envision, like, why is this nerd shit fun? Oh, no kids in here, right? My kids left. <laughs> no kids anymore. I guess I'll watch my language. So trying to make it visible to them, like, trying to help them understand what's going on. So we've got, we've got some vignettes that we can kind of share about notable folks in, in cyberspace, in, in, in the public domain that are doing this cybersecurity work. And not only, you know, a diverse group of people, but also a diverse group of jobs. Because like, you know, I think of, I think of like hacker stuff, you know, writing exploits and, and uh, gaining persistence and things like that. But cybersecurity also includes like constructing the infrastructure, making sure that it meets the standards, whatever those standards may be, uh, working policy issues, working sales, you know, all of, there's a whole lot of cybersecurity careers, and in the US, we need them all. We need them all so that we can compete on the world stage and remain relevant. And so, you know, again, a diversity of, of people. We want people to be able to see themselves, whoever we're talking to. So we've got, we've got somebody, you know, potentially who's, who's uh, writing fiction and, and telling the story about cybersecurity and a Navy veteran. And then we've got, we've got a woman who helped create a, a, a bunch of honeypot software. And we can kind of talk to each of those points. And, and then you can also kind of, we also try and throw in games sometimes. Oh, the kids are back, so I won't cuss anymore. Um, <laughs> uh, you, can, you can also, you can also you know, involve games. You know, the first time you learned about a Cedar site where if you're like me, it was in like an activity book at some point when you were a kid and, and there was a little code thing, uh, you know, maybe you had a little decoder ring or something like that. Well, that, that directly, that, that kind of skill set, that interest, that curiosity that leads you to create codes, that's very applicable to cryptography and, and, and other parts of, of our cybersecurity careers. Uh, and then for, for folks that are a little bit older, they, they've got a set of skills already, they've got a set of interests at least hobbies and things that they're interested in. And, and, and those kind of people really want more of a, a well-defined career path. Help me understand, you know, how, how do my skills and interests pair up with those careers? And so we've got some, you know, kind of poster kind of uh, print-offs that, that we can share out. So all, again, these are all the materials that other ambassadors have created. And in our community, we're sharing, we just got like a Google Drive and we've got a mailing list. Um, and, and then you can, you can steal from other ambassadors to throw a presentation together. But of course, the most interesting thing is when you have, when you have your own stories and your own interests that you can share with a crowd uh, of, of students, uh, high school, uh, you know, young students, high schoolers, college students, college graduates, you know, maybe, maybe at a table at a conference, wherever. There's all kinds of opportunities to be an ambassador. So on the right, you know, somebody might imagine, hey, I've got, I've got some math skills. How do, how do I, you know, where can I go in cybersecurity, cryptography? You don't really see cryptographic professionals running around all the time. That's a pretty niche field, but certainly there are people that do it and uh, would be interested in doing that when they, when they grow up. Uh, and then of course, uh, you know, the kind of more common threat hunter you might, you might learn from this that if you've got a man bun and round glasses, then threat hunter is, is, a, is a good skill set for you. But, but of course, kind of the more common thing, both, both in, the, in the DOD world, in the government side, DHS, 
And then also in, in the public sector, right? There's a, lot, there's a lot of people that are doing threat hunting these days. So how, how can you participate? Join our mailing list. Really, we've got, we've got a, uh, a website down here. Here's the tiny URL that goes there. Uh, if you Google Cybersecurity Career Ambassador NIST, you'll find this webpage super easy. You'll find my dorky face on there as one of the co-chairs. Uh, and then there's a link to the mailing list on there. Just, just shoot it a, an email. It's a Google Groups uh, a mailing list. And uh, then you'll see uh, some of the events to participate in. Uh, after, after joining the mailing list, attend an info section. It's on the third Tuesday of every month at 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 Central. It's, uh, it's hosted on uh, Microsoft Teams. We'll send out the link on the mailing list. It's the kind of, you know, how to, what do we expect of ambassadors? It's, it's basically exactly what I've talked about here. We ask ambassadors to host at least one session a year that, that extols the virtues of cybersecurity careers, you know, target an audience, and then come tell us about it afterwards. So we've got a form where we can collect your, your feedback. You know, what, what kind of a group did you go speak to or, or what kind of a, a, a social media site did you put information out on? Can you give us a link to your presentation? Can you drop your presentation in so that other ambassadors can use it? Getting that info back is becoming really important because like I said, this, this program has White House level attention. We're trying, to, we're trying to send back up our impacts and our results so that the national government, the executive branch can understand, uh, can understand how we're reaching audiences uh, and encouraging cybersecurity careers in the United States. So a number, you know, the NICE program has a number of different efforts within it, and this is just one of them, but that's why we've got to collect that information. And, and I'm going to leave about five minutes for, for questions here in the end. But uh, some, some additional resources. So on this web page, it's, it's pretty easy to Google this as well. NIST Cybersecurity Week, they've put out a number of videos over the past few years that delve into a bunch of different cybersecurity careers. So I'm, you know, I'm very familiar with my path and the path that leads to a lot of careers around the Air Force. I'm much less familiar with how to go work for some company like Defense Unicorns or so, somebody like that, right? But and exactly what kind of some of those different kind of careers entail. But, but a lot of those are shared on this web page. You can click on these videos. You can see Laura Herschel talk about being a database administrator for USAA, for instance. Uh, it's a little bit of a promo, just a couple minutes, and then a little bit of the practical side as well. So, uh, you know, one great resource that's out there on this site, but as part of this NICE program, they've consolidated a lot of other good information as well, some game sites. I don't think that they yet have a, a link to the Military Cyber Professionals Association, uh, like digital kids thing yet, but they probably should. Um, so a lot of good resources out there to leverage as an ambassador, um, obviously, you don't have to join this program to be an ambassador about cybersecurity careers. Uh, so even, even if you're not, all of this kind of stuff is available just on the open web. You know, a lot, if, you're, if you're in this and you love it, you're probably already basically an ambassador for cybersecurity. And that's excellent. And then, and then one other thing, their NICE conference, uh, they're bringing a K-12 educators conference here this winter. So this kind of like, this happens every year at Jump Cities. If you're in that K through 12 arena, like as an administrator or a teacher or, or whatever, that you might be interested in networking with some other folks over cybersecurity education. And, and so here's the conference. It's, it's, not super, it's not super cheap and accessible like B-sides, uh, but it, it should be interesting in this year, it's here in San Antonio. Okay, so that's about the, uh, 20 minutes. What kind of questions do you have? Any questions? Shoot. Tabs or spaces? Oh, <laughs> tabs that turn into spaces. I realize that's how I should be answering that. It seems to be a lot of confusion. Hit the tab, keep turning into spaces. Pep 8, baby. Shoot. So, are the program doing anything to spread cyber and to the rural communities? Because, like, in here in San Antonio area, there's a lot 
the Cyber Patriot and their scholarships and all that, but then I have Caitlin here who was on my Cyber Patriot team out in rural town. She's going into cyber, but she doesn't. She never got the opportunities that we did here yeah. in San Antonio, and so now I'm looking for opportunities for her. So how do I help her get into this, right? And how do I get more resources to my rural communities? That's a great question. That's a great question. Um, we're not as organized here in San Antonio as in some other places. New, new program uh, in Pennsylvania, they've got a regional chair who has been able to kind of find some centers in those rural But it's so dependent on the people that might want to go kind of share that message. And, and our, you know, our program is a, is a program of volunteers. So if really, you know, if you had somebody that was out there that just wanted to jump in and volunteer with their local rural school, school or something like that, I'm sure it would happen. Uh, how, how far out do you live? I, uh, maybe I'd be happy to come out there and talk to you, your school or whatever. Uh, so it's Tondo and then Dennis. So yeah. all, we're focusing on all the towns like on Highway 90. Nice, nice. Yeah, I mean, that'd be fun. It's it's not that far from Lapland, right? It's so, not. So we've been trying to get more from Lapland communities. I'll give you my card again after yeah. the, a card after this so we can, uh, we can maybe set something up. Yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure we can get some some folks to show up out there and talk about cybersecurity. It's so critical. Like we, like I mentioned diversity. It's a goal of the program to build diversity um, in, in cybersecurity. Um, and, and we don't so much talk about like, hey, how do we reach out to rural areas? It's tough. It's the last mile problem, right? What else? Shoot. So you said the White House has taken interest. Yeah. What are you guys hoping that they're going to see? Um, so this this year our goal is with the cybersecurity uh, that cybersecurity career week we're trying to have an event in every state. We're right now trying to build up regional needs in each of the kind of DHS CISA regions. Uh, so there's ten regions, and so we've got we've got a regional need in like uh, Pennsylvania, Maryland area. Uh, we've got a notional regional lead out in California, but we really want to spread that out and, and continue to build this network. So, uh, you know, metrics wise, I would love to be able to have some metrics that say we reached this many people and this many people chose cybersecurity. Look at the bump in degrees that were granted after we did this. We are, we are nowhere near mature enough to have that kind of a metric. But so, you know, more of like measures of uh, performance instead of effectiveness right now. What else? So, what would catastrophic success look like? <laughs> uh, that's a that's a great question. Yeah, you know, uh, I, you know, for for this year, catastrophic success looks like we have we have regional leads in each area. We've got an event in every state at that cybersecurity career week. Uh, we've got we've got policy making recommendations and things like that. But you know, really, like I said, our goal is to build that ambassador network. Um, on our mailing list, we've got some kind of like uh, rudimentary uh, ambassador to ambassador mentorship opportunities going on. So um, I, you know, I hope that it's as fulfilling for the ambassadors as for the people that they talk to. What else? John. So the, the nice work roles that you showed had things like software developer, database administrators, admin, things like that. But it seems like when we talk about cyber, we talk about like there's the cybersecurity folks, and then there's all the IT folks and developers over there. And so I guess as an ambassador, like how much how much of it is getting people into the security or IT field, and how much of it is trying to actually like bring those two communities that need to be one community together? Um, that's that's a great question. That's a great question. And, you know, we're kind of focused more on just <coughs> spreading the word about the, the fields. And you know, I think I think related to that, there's the problem of if you're on one side, you maybe don't see the other side as cyber. If you're on the other side, and none of us see sales as cyber, right? <laughs> but like all all are critical pieces of it. Um, and you know, right, right now I'd say we're really reliant on the ambassadors to apply our own experience, and so we're probably we might you know as a consequence of that we might be kind of reinforcing the existing rift that I, I agree I think exists as well. But you know these resources that NIST is showing they cover they cover a huge gamut of careers. Yeah. So they've got they got examples from each of the kind of major areas of their nice. Uh, nice thing which covers both sides of that. Yeah. What else? Anything else? Shoot. What regions need the most help? 
Um, that's a good question. You know, uh, for anybody who works for the government, you know how much trouble it is to even like set up a web page, uh, let alone one that tells where your volunteers are kind of located. Uh, but I don't work for the government when I work, when I do this with NIST, so it's it's easier for me. Um, t Texas, especially this area, is is a is a we've got a number of folks here, but we don't have a tight kind of organization going on. Um, I think uh, North Central, you know, uh, Minnesota type area doesn't have a ton, and of course I, I know of maybe one ambassador in Alaska. You know, even I'm kind of a little bit impressed by that. So. <laughs> and it's a, this is a worldwide organization. It's an international, you know, we're not just limiting ambassadors to the U.S. and, and things like that, but obviously it's the U.S. government. So. All right, I'm being cut off. I'm being kicked off. But thank you. I'm going to stick around afterwards if you'd like any information about how to join. I'm going to hand out my card. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks for attending. Appreciate it.